So, do you think you have a bad wheel bearing? If so, today's video is for you. Welcome back to the Junkyard Junkie channel. Today, I will be showing you everything you need to know to go from a novice to essentially being able to do this on any vehicle. We will go over all the tools you need, a basic understanding of how a wheel bearing works, symptoms of a bad wheel bearing, how to test the wheel bearing, and finally, replacing a wheel bearing with tips and tricks along the way. Enough talking about it, let's jump right into it. Starting off with the tools that we need, first and foremost, you're gonna need a jack with jack stands. Next, we need a socket set and a ratchet. You will also need a set of wrenches. In most cases, you will need snap ring pliers, a simple flathead screwdriver, and finally, we need a specialty tool to remove the hub and give us the ability to press the bearing out and then back in. How this works is you put down the money for the tool. Once you return it, they will give you all your money back. The specialty tool we'll be using in today's video, you can borrow from O'Reilly's. The name of it is Rental Tools Evertough Hub Remover and Installer Kit. The part number is 67231. You can also rent a axle nut socket set. Okay, so now we'll go over the basic understanding of how wheel bearings work. We all know a vehicle needs wheels in order to move easily, but these wheels that turn have to be able to connect to the vehicle's suspension, more specifically, the steering knuckle. It separates the hub from the knuckle. This allows the hub to spin independently while still connected to the knuckle. Think of a fidget spinner. It's stationary on your finger while the outside is allowed to spin at a rapid pace. But in our case, the inside spins while the outside stays still. There's two main types of bearings. You have roller and ball bearings. Ball bearing being more common in front wheel drive vehicles. You have an outer ring, an inner ring, Inside of the rings is a channel for the ball bearing to rotate around. Also, there's usually a dust shield on both sides of the wheel bearing. Always check to see if one side is magnetic because a lot of manufacturers use a magnetic side to interact with your wheel speed sensor. The magnetic side will always go towards the center of the vehicle. So that's the main operation and purpose of your wheel bearing. What are the symptoms of a bad wheel bearing? First thing you'll most likely notice is a roaring noise coming from one side of your vehicle. The noise will get louder the faster you go and quiet back down as you slow down. Also, it may get worse or better going around corners. The reason for this is as you go into a turn, your vehicle's center of gravity switches to the opposite side of the turn. So therefore, it will put the load on that side. What this can tell you is which side is the problem. So if you turn left and it gets quieter, then we know the load would be on the opposite side, which means our right wheel bearing would be the problem. The reason it gets quieter is because the load essentially forces pressure on it to keep everything tight. Other symptoms can include uneven tire wear, steering wheel vibrations, and finally, wheel wobble, which is something pretty scary and you don't want to happen to you. Now that we know more about the symptoms, let's diagnose it. How I like to test for a bad wheel bearing is to start with a road test. I like to confirm the problem by listening for the roaring noise. From there, you can usually tell which side it is and if it is in the front or the back. But if you can't, you can always take it around corners in both directions to listen to see which way quietens it down. Remember, if you're going left when it gets quiet, then it's your right side and vice versa. But never stop at this point. You always want to verify. So in our case, it sounds to be coming from the front right. So we will lift the car up and inspect it further. Go ahead and grab your jack, lift the vehicle up, then safely let the jack down so your vehicle rests on the jack stands. For extra protection, throw the tire underneath the frame. Remember, things can be replaced, but you can't. Now then, start by rotating the wheel and listen for a grinding metal on metal noise. If you hear this when spinning it, then it is a bad wheel bearing. Next test is grabbing your wheel at the nine o'clock and three o'clock position wiggle it back and forth. This should not move. If it does, then you want to make sure there's also play at 12 and six o'clock. Once again, wiggle it back and forth. At this point, we have four outcomes. If it doesn't move back and forth in any direction, then this may not be our culprit. Secondly, if it moves at the nine and three position, but does not move at the 12 and six, then you most likely will have a tie rod problem. Third outcome is if nine and three are tight, but 12 and six wiggles. This would mean that you probably have bad ball joints. Finally, if it wiggles in both directions, like with this car, you have a bad wheel bearing. Also, little tip here, you can take a stethoscope and if you put it inside the wheel bearing and turn it and you hear that grinding or metal gritty noise, 
then you can also tell that the wheel bearing is bad. First thing you want to do if you're not using an impact gun is to go ahead and crack all the lug nuts loose. Then lift and support the car, take the wheel off. We need to break the CV axle nut loose. I'll be using an impact. If you don't have one, you can have someone to press the brakes for you while you break it loose with a longer breaker bar. Then we need to go ahead and remove the brake caliper and bracket along with the rotor. Now we have to separate the knuckle from the top or the bottom in order for us to get clearance to remove our CV axle. In most cases, I will choose to go ahead and remove the strut from the steering knuckle. In this case, we have a pinch bolt design. This is common on Mazdas and some Fords, but here's an example of what the most common way the strut connects to your knuckle. As you can see, there's just two bolts you need to remove and then it will be free. In our case, we need to remove the pinch bolt and use a hammer to tap the knuckle down and off of our strut. Once we do that, we will have plenty of room to pull our CV axle out. And get started on removing the wheel hub and bearing. In our kit, we want to find the correct adapter in order to pull the hub off. We want the right adapter to just push on the hub itself which is going to be the most inner one you see on there. Normally, you do not want to press out the bearing and the hub because the bearing is almost always retained by a snap ring. The snap ring can be in front of the knuckle or on the back side. Whichever side it is on is the side the bearing will have to come out. This vehicle today is all one piece. It's made together, which isn't that common. So if you'd like to see how the more common one looks like and how to do it, click the card right above or go into the description. This is one of my older videos, but it shows everything you need to know that I can't cover with this style. Also, I'll be re-uploading it with better audio. So, since ours is made of one piece, we will go ahead and push it out as one piece. Here we go. So the nut is going to be a 27 millimeter and down here we're going to have a 24 millimeter. Now time to install. Okay, so you want to clean out the inside really well. Now we'll go ahead and take our new one. You can put a little grease on there. I usually tap them to start them. Now we'll get our tool back on there. The main thing here is you want to make sure that it is going in straight with little resistance. So we will put an adapter plate on the front of the hub and on the back side, we will get the appropriate size adapter so that it has something to grab and pull the bearing and hub in. That's all there is to it. So remember, if I can do it, you can do it. If you found this video helpful, please leave me a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.